So, Richard, I think we are live. Can you hear me? I can. Okay, fantastic. Well, I think um, there's nowhere that you can go, Richard, <laughs> on this world. Regardless of what continent you're on, we will get an update. I know yeah. you're not in your home location. You are, <laughs> you are in a top secret location somewhere in the United States of America, but we've tracked you down for a quick update. Uh, How have you been, Richard? Really good. Yes, I'm uh, actually staying in a, in a friend's basement in New York City. Um, so I'm down in the bunker here looking rather the pink and the, the glorious lighting. But no, it's, it's, been, it's been great to be able to catch up with various locations. I was thinking I, I did one update stand with the, my laptop balance on a stack of chairs at a conference once. So uh, dedication is what it okay. is, dedication. Well, you, you say basement. It's nice to see that it's got white walls and pictures rather oh, it's, than, it's rather than whips and leathers and whatnot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it's more of the kind of leather-bound uh, den than it is the, uh, the, the dusty basement. So it's quite pleasant down here. Well, I think our viewers want to know maybe a bit less about the basement. <laughs> and a bit more about what's going on. So um, let's jump into it as we always do. Um, I hear that you guys are making some uh, great progress with Wazam and Rust. So how's all that going, Richard? I mean, what are some of the benefits we're going to start seeing when it comes yep. to those technologies and Saito as a whole? Yep. So, I mean, it's sort of Wasm and, and Rust are kind of the marrying of the two mm. code bases. The kind of initial proof of concept with it was all in Node.js something like Rust is what you need for a data center and really high capacity. Uh, and this is bringing those two together. And it's kind of the big crucial step before token persistence, mm. um, but just because it gives us a single reliable a code base and we're not split trying to keep things in, in sync. Anyone who's done development knows how hard that is. Um, but the other side of it is that it gives us um, some of the kind of internal infrastructure we need. The code can be handling um, higher throughput and a lot of tasks that are kind of more data handling that JavaScript really wasn't built for are simply a lot faster in the WASM, in the Rust wrapped into mm. the browser. And that can form part of being able to do real peer-to-peer -peer things. You know, we're asking the browser at the moment, which is core to being a simple way to get on board with Saito and to get mm. started up, to do a lot of work. We're asking it to be a full blockchain node in a lot of ways. And so this is a, a unique set of challenges, but you know, it's going well, a lot of behind the scenes works. So unfortunately, people aren't seeing, you know, like new bells and whistles every yeah. week. Um, but, you know, we're still pushing ahead on, on the sort of target of end of August for all of this to come together and for token persistence, which is, I think, obviously a next and important step for the project. So moving on, let's talk a bit more about your internal databases. Um, Obviously, I've 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 hear you say before in the past uh, claims from Saito that it's a, a true peer to peer network, yeah. no servers, no intermediaries. Um, but how do you manage to store all of that data and actually sync all those data across the nodes? Right, I mean, there must be so that's that's really the big the big question mm. is, and I, I'm I'm thinking of putting together some more concrete thoughts on this in a post if if time permits. Mm. But basically. Yeah. How do you compete with something like Google or Facebook with those yeah. millions of servers? I mean, they're paying for them. We know how they're paying for them, and that's what we're trying to kind of you know break free from. Um, and really, I think some people are saying federation. You know, lots of little servers run by independent groups. But to me, peer to peer is the way ahead, and that means think about BitTorrent, which mm. is the thing people can understand the yeah. best. If you've got a big file, say a Linux ISO or you know. Uh, you know, store, store data and you want to share that with people, then that's really the way we've all seen that you can do that in a big group yeah. effectively, right? And you can get great speeds. In fact, that's the one of the few times you'll see better internet speed than you, you know, with your, with peers or something like that than you will from a great big provider, mm. right? Because your peers can provide you that information faster than a, than a central server can. Um, and that's really the way we need to push forward. So having the ability to store, say, red square posts means you can work as a swarm to keep each other informed with what's going on. And that's how we jettison those centralized players. Um, so these are like along with the WASM and so starting to use the new internal database features in browsers, we can start saying everything's a peer, a node mm -hmm. on the network, a full node, and your browser have the same rights and abilities. Um, you might not choose to run them as hard or you might want to do things that have, you know, certain things on a full node and certain things on a browser, but they can both speak the same language and no one has priority. That's a big part of kind of, you know, the side of dream. And it's part of like getting 
a set of technology that's actually going to beat centralized providers. Mm. It's not just the decentralization we can get from the, the blockchain. It's also having a set of kit to let us do that. Um, so we're really excited because that's starting to happen and we're starting to see need for it too. You mentioned um, there was also a, a paper underway. Any, any sneak peeks you can give us or some of the main ideas? Um, and this sort of started out of some discussion, online discussion David was having with a couple mm. of academics on, on Twitter. Um, and it, it's just a chance for us to, to push back strongly on, on the kind of pushback we get a lot of the time where people say, oh, that's not possible. So the job is to make the best set of compromises. Mm. And that's the classic thing with proof of work, proof of stake. They both say, we just can't pay the network. So we have this trilemma or whatever, this compromise between these three things. Um, and this is just a case for us to formally state, this is not the case with sibling and with networks. You can pay a network and you can do it in a way, side of consensus, that doesn't let people just take money out of the system and, and, and break it. So um, we're putting those sort of final pieces together on that. We're getting some great assistance and feedback from the community. And then we hope to put it up on archive soon and push it at academics and get some kind of um, push to use it to kind of as, a, as an outreach method to get some more recognition and to force the point in those areas to say, look, this is important. It needs more attention. Hmm. You know, on the on the topic of outreach, uh, hmm. you are obviously abroad at the moment, actually. And, and there's and there's a meetup coming up, right? There's a meetup in North Carolina. I mean, how have you found yourself on that part of the well, world? That was that was very weird. So I'm, I'm in uh, New York and, and the US for family reasons. And I, I've met up with a couple of citizens and I've got another couple of meetings today mm. actually with people in, in New York and area. I mean, it's obviously so big, you can do that. But in the process, I was actually uh, set up a time to meet up with a very old friend who happened to be in North Carolina. So I put out a note to say, I'll be there too. And it turns out <laughs> there's a nest of citizens in that part of the world. <laughs> Um, maybe we don't live in nests, maybe we live in citadels, I don't know. But there's a group of fine young citizens uh, in the area. So we're setting up to have a meetup on Saturday in Asheville, North Carolina, which I'm really looking forward to. It's sort of hard getting the brain back into being able to do in person, um, but it's lovely when you do. I can imagine. Now, one of the, I'd say, most impressive features, um, for me, certainly, uh, being a content creator is... Uh, is your video call out, which is what we're using, which is what we're using today, mm. all right? And um, I think you're managing, you know, somewhere in the region of hundreds of calls daily on average. Yeah. Right? And that's, that's pretty amazing. That's pretty amazing. I'm, I am curious that how do you achieve, you know, such a high quality because it's quality in terms of what I can see, certainly on my screen, yeah. and obviously performance with a decentralized network because it always feels like there's a bit of give and take somewhere. Well, this is, this is the thing, and this goes back to what I was saying mm. about the WASM and the, the database stuff is, this is peer to peer. So actually what you're using a lot of the time with things like Zoom is a peer to peer connection. You're two, yep. the two browsers or the two pieces of software mm. connected directly across the internet. Um, but that connection is kind of owned by the provider. Zoom owns that for you and they do do some connecting for you. Yep. But basically they want to keep it that way, obviously, because that's what they're selling. Um, the flip is, and I think this is really possible. You know, one of the ways we can show people this is a way to get a big mass adoption here is when you start using side of video call, you realize all I needed was to connect to the other person. And that's what a blockchain gives you. It gives you universal broadcast and the keys and identity that you manage and own and the ability to talk to other mm. people. Once you've got that, the two browsers can set up connection and they can, they can negotiate as good a connection as the pipes between the two of you will you know, admit if, if I was tethered to a 2G phone, this is not going to work. There's just not enough bandwidth. Yeah. But I'm not beholden to any like provider to say, well, they'll tell me how long we can make the call yeah. for or what quality we can attempt to broadcast that, etc. Um, so there are there are cool features we've kind of got in the pipeline um, that you know various people want. You know, we'd like to add blurred backgrounds and those sorts of things because that's important to some people. Not everyone's in <laughs> such a nice studio as you. Um, <laughs> But you can see, I think you can just see the difference and the feeling that's different when you use this and you just somewhere in the first few minutes of the call, seconds of the call, you realize there was no halt. There was no bit where you jumped over somebody else's hurdle yeah. to start start this up. You just connected, right? you send me a link, up, bang, we're in. Um, and so I think this shows both how you can build things that are better software experiences in this decentralized way. Um, but also how peer-to-peer -peer can be the leverage point 
to say that's our secret weapon. That's how we make something that's more um, user friendly and more effective than a centralized provider. And of course, the chain is what underneath it just makes that possible by providing those base services of identity and, and um, communication. I mean, it's it's it. it... It, it's impressive because the other thing, and you touched on it earlier before, which is, you know, you can see this. This is how blockchain technology gets adopted. You know, mm. we're using it for something which is an everyday task that, right. we, that we have. If we want to speak to somebody, we'll, you know, we'll either do a FaceTime, we'll pick up our phone. But here mm -hmm. you have, you know, a completely free service. Um, it pretty much the limitations will be based on how much bandwidth you can give and receive more than anything else. And that's within right. your control. And but here we are talking. We could leave this open all day. It yeah. doesn't matter. Um, the and I think that's the thing. The games do the same thing, and the games helped us get adept enough at mm. this sort of thing to, to take it wider. But I think video calls are a little more obvious to people when they use it of the difference, right? So if you're playing poker on side, of, there's no there's no house, there's no yeah. dealer. You're, you're using cryptography to do it with just just whoever's in the game. Um, and that's pretty cool, but people aren't necessarily seeing that. They're not experiencing as much of a difference as with, say, this this situation where it's very obviously, um, you just pop straight out at you. Yeah. Like, this is as good as anything else I've used, and it's completely free in the sense of freedom. Right? We're, we're here to do what we want. And nothing's stopping anyone from writing another client. If you wanted to just package this as an app or mm. something, please. You know, We're actually really for that. Um, and that, that, to me, is the exciting thing about it. Perfect. Well, look, Richard, as always, I super appreciate you coming on the show. We love having you on the show. And thank you for this uh, short but sweet update, um, which is always welcomed. And uh, Yeah, we, we, we try and keep it brief, but we always seem to go a little bit over our, our targets. But yeah, I think that's, that's great. great. It's, it's great to have these chats. Well, great. Well, thank you, Richard. And uh, we will catch up soon. And for those uh, who want to find out more, make sure you check out the links below. And Richard, I'll let you say it. I know you want to say it. Smash up those likes. Go ahead, Richard. The floor is yours. <laughs> Hit, smash that like button, people. <laughs> Got to get that in there. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Thanks for joining us, Richard. See you all soon. Thanks, everyone.